what's so fascinating about the Cottage Hospital here is that it really embodies 100 years, 150 years even, of uh, the development of the provision of healthcare. Initially, when it opened in about 1900, 1901, Winsford Cottage Hospital was built to serve the needs of the poor in 13 scattered parishes in deepest Devon. Now, it's always lovely coming in through the front door, isn't it? Yes. You have that sense of being as all these patients for so many decades would have come in here feeling anxious or happy or whatever. Um, and it's just such a welcoming space somehow before you get to the, the long corridor with the, the wards off, which where life might get a bit more serious. The building of the Cottage Hospital must have been transformative for the communities around here. Before it arrived, before it was built, they'd have had to travel about 30 miles to Exeter um, or possibly nearer to Oakhampton. But either way, those were long distances then, so probably they wouldn't have bothered and would therefore not have received treatment. As you say, people would have come into the waiting room <laughs> and they sit here anxiously, yeah, rubbing sitting, their feet. I know, I know, but with and a nice this, fire on. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see what's happened here, the wear and tear. On Voice's original golden mosaic tiles, all the, the, uh, the old chaps who got hurt on the farm mm. or the young lads in a scrape yeah. or the young wives who were expecting a baby could just come to this homely setting and, mm. and sit here waiting for the appointment with Good. their GP. Winsford Cottage Hospital was built by Maria Louisa Medley, known to all as Molly Medley, in memory of her husband George. The Medleys were a wealthy couple who lived in Mayfair, lived in London, and they came to uh, Halwell Junction in 1880. In 1899, George Medley died, and so Maria Medley decided to build the Cottage Hospital. It was a very um, philanthropic gesture on her part. Molly Medley is really a continuation of that mid-century growing trend towards the wealthy stepping up to provide health care in their own locality. And that continued after the NHS took it on until 1998 when unfortunately the NHS decided that the cottage hospital was no longer um, viable. Initially when it opened, the uh, patients were genuinely the villagers from round about, so they would be for little minor ailments, perhaps care of the elderly, maternity care and so on. Then of course came the Great War, 1914 to 18 war, and at that point the, um, the hospital was used for convalescing soldiers. And you can just imagine what a contrast a sunny south facing veranda in deepest Devon would have been. I can't wait to see these all yeah. polished up and bright, nice copper again. Yeah, it'll be fabulous to have this all cleaned up and brought back to life. Charles Francis Annesley Voisey, or CFA Voisey, was one of the defining architects, really, of uh, British architecture in the 20th century. He lived a very long life, so he lived from 1857 to 1941. And that means that, in a sense, he bridges the Victorian age and our own times today. Voisey, as, a, as an arts and crafts designer, believed just as strongly as William Morris et al. in the importance of traditional craftsmanship and the importance of really good design. We all find Voisey's design and architecture somehow deeply reassuring. The entrance hall was very important for him, and that we see uh, here at Winsford, in fact, as a, as a simple welcoming space that immediately brought people in to uh, a safe place. His wonderful thick walls, his sweeping roofs that bring the eaves right down, those are an immediate signal of somewhere that will be safe and secure and, and restful to be in. And what's so fascinating about Winsford Cottage Hospital is that he brings those qualities of security and safeness and intimacy into what essentially is an institutional building. 
And another thing that makes uh, Voices buildings instantly recognisable for me are the very emphatic horizontal lines. You get almost a ribbon of windows, um, especially brought out actually in the corridor here at Winsford. The fireplace is interesting and we've got a big discussion on the fireplaces. Yes, because I need to catch up with you on that, don't yeah. I? We've um, done quite a lot of investigation work in a couple of the other, in the ward and one of the other rooms with regards to the fireplaces. This one's still a little, perhaps a little bit of a mystery because we haven't found any evidence um, to really sort of say what the form of this was in its original um, yeah, it's, it's going form. to need some careful unpicking, isn't it, yeah. probably? I mean, we've got um, these tiles here, which are obviously the, well, I say obviously, would appear to be the original uh, in terms of because this has clearly been inserted at a later time. Yeah, I mean, those are, those are obviously much later, aren't they? Yeah. But those, those have a voicey look about them somehow. I mean, well, certainly the colour yeah. and texture and the changes in the colours and things, which we see from the, some of the photographs and of the others. But... Elsewhere, he tended to use vertical rectangles in the fireplace tiling, and this, these are six inch square, so it, it's a slight deviation Puzzle perhaps yes. from his normal um, design. Yeah. Tell me about the fireplace discoveries yeah. in the women's ward. Yeah. Well, you won't have seen this since the last time we were here. Right, well what we've been doing here is we've been doing some investigation to um, try and establish the original form because obviously it's been blocked up and um, well, more modern uh, heaters put in, in, its, in, the, in the fireplace itself. So what we've been trying to do, because this is one of the mysteries, is what the fireplaces were actually like. We've opened up this here and it's revealed two steels, one here and one here. The lower one obviously is a later insert. We had a debate obviously, or we've been having a debate as to whether they were stoves or open fires. Because um, open fires were an important part, weren't they, of yeah. um, Voise's belief for cottage hospitals that there should be um, lots of cheerful fires and, yes. and warmth and, and fresh air as well, circulation fresh of fresh air, air which is very important. He was very um, keen to give a homely um, feeling to his Yeah, wards. which I guess is why we're beginning to see similarities possibly with his yeah. own house, um, the orchard in Chorley Wood, yeah. which, which I guess was being built around the same time. I believe so. I believe it was almost exactly at the same yeah. time. So and I think this is what makes Voise's architecture so wonderful and um, appealing to everybody, that he manages to build on a human domestic yeah. scale, even when he's building a hospital. Yeah. So you've got exactly the same values of, um, of, of calm, of repose, of security and safety yes. that you'd have in your own home. Um, and it's really interesting, the, the windows, how they operate here, and the beautiful detailing of them, which have two settings on them, which are nicely detailed in terms of for just a narrow opening, or if you wished, an extensive opening. And of course, Voisey, he thought very carefully about the planning of the floor plan in the hospital yeah. because he made the women's ward right next to the children's ward oh, next door. Look. Yeah. The really lovely thing about this room, isn't it, is yeah. the, window, yeah, the window, which was placed so that the children could overlook Halwell Junction yeah. with all the steam trains coming and going and there's a, there's a lovely quote Voisey did um, did an interview for an architectural journal at the time and he, he says he's done this deliberately because um, it's the only entertainment hereabouts <laughs> and you can kind of sympathize yeah, with that it's a big pity it's not still there but yeah no it is mind you meanwhile gosh this looks awful doesn't it um, well, we've got, what's, what's yeah. going on here well we've got here is sort of raking area of dampness which I first looked at and thought that's a very strange thing that's going on. Uh, at that stage there was a, um, a curtain or blind hanging here mm. and I lifted the blind and outside the window uh -huh. <laughs> is the problem. Detached downpipe, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> pipe, which um, well, as I said we need to do some temporary repairs and fixing of such things just to allow this to start to dry out. Yeah. Let's go and look at some of the other rooms and if we go back to the hall and then walk into the doctor's, the original doctor's surgery, we can have a look at the fireplace that we've opened up there. Oh, great.
And the doorways are great, aren't they? Because they're yeah. so wide and generous. Um, yeah. I guess so that the the trolleys, you know, the the, 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 the wheel or, yeah. beds or whatever could go through yeah. on their India rubber tires, which yeah. everybody was so excited <laughs> about then. Um, but they're really, really but you've got lovely. This beautiful original ironmongery. Needs of a bit of easement there, and these fantastic hinges. Which, which are, again comes down to Voisey yeah. making sure that he designed every single detail. And you've been doing some work on this fireplace as well, haven't you? A little bit of opening up to try and discover what it was and oh, how it was made. But before we get to that, can't we just, can we just pause a second? Because isn't this gorgeous? I love these fireplaces. And somehow, you know, the heart motif is so simple. And it's quintessentially Voisey. He somehow manages to, with his architecture and his design, tap into something that we all have that's deep inside us a need for just gentle reassurance and affection and the heart says it all really yeah. doesn't it the people who blocked in the first place were really kind and left us all the fittings oh, how as brilliant. well so this was this was up the chimney was it or yeah no it was exactly where you um just oh so, so it just from. in there so it's it just, was just, just blocked wedged, up behind wedged in behind so we're rather hoping that for the other blocked up fireplaces as well oh, um wow. we'll, we'll find all the others after the Great War, it then returned to community use and so developed right through until 1948 when the National Health Service was founded. Through those years, it settled back into its community role with an increasing specialism in maternity care and also care of the elderly. That use continued happily until 1998 when the NHS put the building on the market. A little local trust was formed, the Winsford Hospital Trust, um, which stepped into the breach fantastically and for about 10 years, 10 or 12 years, they ran the cottage hospital as a community centre. Gradually the state of the building became more and more a matter of concern and way beyond the capabilities of a, a small local trust. So we will be able to restore it as one of our holiday lets for six people uh, to pay for its future maintenance but at the same time we're very much planning to keep one wing still available for community use, community meetings and even possibly to keep some kind of light touch medical provision going as well. And this of course, so this would have been originally the veranda feeding again into the yeah. emphasis on fresh air yeah. where the patients could come and sit and I love to think of the convalescing First World War soldiers coming here yeah. and just sitting in the sun and looking at the quiet views and perhaps just recovering a bit mm. but yeah. then of course in the 50s I guess or later even there was this sun lounge built on. Yeah which hasn't been helpfully put on. We know that originally there were from earlier photographs there was a range of bench along this side returning at the far end. Old photographs show three sets of trellis columns supporting this steel beam and the steel beam at this end, or oh, at both ends, has been cut away removing this bottom flange which is a structural issue. Mm. So we've got quite a bit of yeah. structural work to make this work. It's probably the most tricky structural aspects yeah. of this building. But it'll be worth it I think, won't Absolutely. it? Because it, it puts it, it really captures the spirit of the building again. Yeah. However practical this was in later years, it's in yeah. such a dreadful state now, yeah. there's no way it can be saved. Absolutely. Mind how we go. Yeah. Brr, yeah. So you get a real sense here, don't you, of how the corridor runs as the connecting spine between the men's ward and the emergency ward yeah. on the right here and then the women's ward and the children's ward on the left and then we've got this this wonderfully typical voisey sweeping roof of, of Delabold slate yeah and uh, well we, but there are some big slates up there and that's one of our concerns as well because to source such large slates is very difficult mm. and, and they are quite thin because what's coming out of the Delavol quarry at the moment is slightly thicker and that causes an issue as well a trying to match them in color wise but b in terms of, in terms thickness, of thickness as well it's so complicated isn't it it's, in trying yeah. to source these traditional materials it is so we've got lots of things to discuss just a few, just a few. <laughs>